have the Phillies arrived a little ahead of schedule or are they going to be able to continue this type of pace with the way their offense is? We'll talk a lot of Phillies here. Uh, Jerry Krasnick writes over at ESPN.com about the Phillies, and he joins us now on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN with a look at this young Phillies team. Jerry, welcome back. How are you, pal? I'm good. How are you? We're doing well, and of course, uh, the Phillies turn the calendar with a winning record uh, in the month of April. I mean, just start there about how improbable that sounds with where this team was a year ago and what they had entering this season. Yeah, I mean, when you went back to spring training and everybody was talking about who's tanking, you know, <laughs> the Phillies were high on that list, and I never especially agreed with that premise. I mean, I think the Phillies are methodically rebuilding, and they're just in a at that stage where, you know, they've gotten rid of a bunch of veterans, and they're waiting to get some young kids back. And sure, could they have gone out maybe and spent a little money on, uh, you know, some fringe guys, and I'll feel bad or two, and maybe one, three or four more games, yeah. Um, but I think they're in a good spot. You know, I really do. They have uh, three good young pitchers in the majors. They have a couple exciting position players. They're loaded in the minors, and they don't have a lot of payroll obligations after this season. So as far as rebuilds go, you know, I could see this team making a big leap in the next couple of years. How about this season, uh, before we move ahead here, Jerry, can they keep this up? The way their offense is right now. Now, that being said, pitching kind of dominates in Major League Baseball right now, and they have some decent, uh, some pretty good pitching. We say decent. They got some pretty good pitching. Can they keep this up with the way their offense is, or do you think eventually uh, they will start to flame out and, and be, play below 500 baseball? Yeah, realistically speaking, I, I have a hard time seeing them continuing this. You know, you look at that lineup and the corner outfield spots are just complete offensive black holes. You know, they right field and left field, I believe they have sub-500 OPSs out of those two spots. <laughs> so they're essentially giving away two offensive positions. And, you know, that's not even including Brian Howard, you know, fading and the catching really isn't uh, all-star caliber. I mean, other than... Um, uh, you know, obviously, Michael Franco with his power, and he's uh, declined a little bit lately. And Odubo Herrera, who has given them much more than they had a right to expect. You know, they just don't pr- produce enough offense. And, um, you know, I think that's when maybe we start to see some of these young kids come up. Um, but, you know, if they continue to pitch the way they do, especially with the three kids at the top of the rotation, um, with Velasquez, Eikhoff, and uh, Aaron Nola and the bullpen, which is pretty good, you know, you might see them losing a lot of three to two, four to two games, uh, but at least they're going to be competitive and fun to watch. Jerry, Mike and I have talked about run differential, and we also all know how long it took them to get to double digits and hits this season, but with the offense not being that great, are there pieces on the current roster that you do like? Yeah, I mean, as I wrote today, I think uh, Michael Franco has some great uh, – he's got some electricity in that bat, you know, so he's a fun player to watch. I think he's going to have to adjust. Um, you know, I did talk to a scout for that story who was saying, look, anything that spins, you know, he's kind of bailing out. I mean, his head's flying. His uh, He's stepping to a third base. He's trying to yank everything. So he's probably going to have to, you know, be a little bit more – uh, deliberate and hit some balls to right field to keep pitchers honest. Um, but he does have a lot of pop, and you know, so that's a big thing. And uh, Herrera, look, I mean, he's he's kind of reinvented himself into an on base machine. So uh, he's he's a good piece, and you really have to like the young pitchers. Uh, Velasquez has been incredible. You know, there's a kid who just looks like he belongs and wants to be a staff ace. And Eikhoff and Nola, you know, look like they're both going to be, at, at the worst, you know, middle rotation type starters. So, um, and they have a lot of guys in Double A AA and Triple A. You, you know, you start to ease those guys in, and all of a sudden you have a, a fairly full roster. How about batting the pitcher eighth? Uh, that's a move that Pete McCannon made not that long ago, and was sticking with it while they were winning. Of course, they lost last night. But what's the theory behind uh, batting the pitcher eighth? You know, I'm not sure. I, I guess it gives you like a, 
you know, sort of a second leadoff hitter like they do in the American League. I mean, with the Phillies, I mean, the funny thing is they have their right fielder batting ninth. You know, a lot of times you might have, uh, <laughs> you know, your second baseman or shortstop a weak hitting position. But, you know, most teams are – I mean, the Toronto has Jose Batista in right field. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's probably what he wants to do, though, is get some seed, you know, at the back end and the, at the top of the order. And it seems to be the trend du jour is the, uh, you know, Joe Madden's done it and some other teams have done it. Uh, Tony LaRusse did years ago to bat somebody in the nine spot. But, look, if your uh, corner outfielders aren't hitting, it really doesn't matter where they hit. Jerry Krasnick with us, ESPN.com, has a piece about uh, the Phillies in that first month of the baseball season. Jerry, one of the things, you know, they 15 and 10, 15 and 11 after last night, you know, they played a winning month of baseball, and as we all kind of, I think, under the realization that they might not be able to keep this up. But one of the exciting parts about this is a lot of the guys acquired in that Hamels deal, and to a lesser extent because Velasquez is here, but in that Giles deal, they still have some guys – that are a part of those deals that aren't here, when do you foresee some of those guys really infiltrating the major leagues? You know, I think they're going to start to trickle in during the year. You know, I would see at some point pretty soon, you know, Cam Perkins is a kid who wasn't a a high pick, but he's hit pretty well. I think Nick Williams, who's, you know, one of the guys they got from Texas, is a guy I could also see coming up at some point this year. Uh, people really like this kid. You know, he could be a 20 to 25 home run guy, maybe even more. Um, Alfaro, the catcher, got off to a great start. I, you know, I think he's the kind of guy that you probably would like to keep down there just to work on the mechanics of catching. And Cameron Ruff and Chooch are a, a pretty serviceable duo, so I think that's a guy they could keep down there. But, you know, I could see Nick Williams coming up at some point. Uh, maybe Cam Perkins. Um, you know, J.P. Crawford is the guy who's going to be interesting because he's sort of the shining light of the system. And, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him out at some point either, even if it's a, a September call-up. So, um, you know, the thing is, a lot of times people uh, keep guys down there to stop their service time clock from starting and, you know, that sort of thing. But the Phillies have so little money on the book uh, after this year I think they're just going to bring players up when they're ready. And as Matt Quintak told me, it's more a case of just making sure that when they come up, they're ready and that they stay up and they contribute. Yeah, Jerry, and then, you know, the the young pitching that we talk about some younger players on the way, but you mentioned Velasquez, Nola, Eikhoff. It seems that that's really where they have stockpiled a lot of different interesting names. Their pitching could be very good as soon as next year. They could be adding some more young pitchers to that rotation. Yeah, you know, uh, they've got this Zach Eflin kid who's off to a great start. You know, Mark Appel, obviously, uh, his luster dimmed a little bit after being a top pick in the draft. But, you know, he's pitching pretty well this year. And people I talk to say there's really no reason that guy can't be, uh, even if it's a four or five starter, you know, a 180 to 200 inning horse. And, you know, maybe he's even better than that. I think you get a guy like Mark Appel out of Houston, where the expectations were high and the profile was high and just let him pitch. You know, there's another guy, um, you know, Ben Lively was one of the guys they got in one of the trades. Um, you know, they they have a lot of arms. So, And they are going to get the first pick in the draft, which will be interesting to see. I mean, uh, you know, they could go with this groom kid, the local kid, or they could go with someone who's a college pitcher. Um, you know, someone around the Phillies told me it's probably – Unfortunately, not the best year to have the number one pick because you don't have that Matt Harvey, Strasburg, you know, Roger Clemens uh, dominant pitcher coming out of college who could slot into your rotation in a year. But still, you know, they have a chance to add another really high-level pitcher, and uh, they do have a lot of arms. So, And, and that's not even withstanding, you know, the, the possibility of going out and spending some money, which I'm sure as they get close to being competitive, uh, they they will go out and get some free agents. Jerry Krasnick with us. Jerry, how about the Latino influence? Because in the past, the Phillies were always kind of criticized for not scouting those markets very well, and and now they seem to have a pretty heavy Latino influence. 
Yeah, you know, I counted them up. I think there's nine guys on the roster who are Latino, and that doesn't even include Hinojosa, who just went on the DL. And, you know, that's where I think Pete McCannon has had a huge influence. You know, here's a guy who's the veteran guy, speaks Spanish, really kind of gets the mindset of the Latin players. And, you know, some of these guys like Herrera and Franco, they play with a lot of emotion. I mean, they love baseball, and he's not on them trying to say, hey, don't do this and, you know, don't show up to the opponent and, and you know, keep your personality to yourself. You know, I, I think he, he talks to them and gives them the freedom to be themselves. And, you know, it's no accident that some of those guys have thrived in that environment. Yeah, and Jerry, you know, one of the things, as, as Pete kind of alluded to, they hadn't done that. And Mike Schmidt actually talked about this on the broadcast on Sunday, Sunday was about the fact that he really thinks those guys have kind of bonded together, and it has been one of the reasons why this team has exceeded expectations early on, whereas last year, early in the year when Sandberg was here, it seemed like you know there was a lot of dissension in the ranks over there. Yeah, look, and part of it, I think, is the fact that also you had some guys like Paul Hamels and Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins who, you know, a year ago were kind of sitting around waited to be traded, so... You know, sometimes you have to clear these guys out, and they've been fortunate. You know, you have Ruiz, who's a consummate professional. Ryan Howard is kind of bought into this. You know, he's here for his last year. He's probably not going anywhere. So I think that's another element at play is the fact that, look, they did trade these guys, and you don't have four or five veterans sitting around listening to rumors all the time and, you know, when are you going to be traded? Um, They've already done that, and that freed them up to be able to move forward. Yeah, and you mentioned, uh, I heard, I think, on the podcast, you were talking about, you know, the Astros of last year and how, like, you know, I, I, like, they were a team that arrived maybe a year early. Now, they're struggling this year. Um, you look at this Phillies team, and maybe they're not a team that win this division, but what do you see, Jerry, as the ceiling for this group right here? And if they were able to kind of bring in some younger guys, what do you kind of see as the ceiling for this year's team? You know, I guess they're in a division where they play Atlanta a lot, which is going to help you. (laughs) You know, Miami's not a powerhouse, so, you know, maybe that helps them compete. You know, I just think I look at them and I see a team, anything to me north of 70 wins, I think it's pretty good. You know, and I don't know that the record is that important this year, but I think it's more a case of just developing these guys and seeing if they can play, you know, and – uh you have some young guys who look like they're confident or ready to be leaders. You want to keep everybody healthy. You want the pitchers to build up their innings. You know, and all of a sudden, I mean, I would say when you look at Franco, Herrera, the three starters, Neris looks like a potentially dominant guy, you know, possible closer. That's six guys that you can kind of hang your hat on. All of a sudden, you know, you add in J.P. Crawford and Nick Williams and uh, – Alfaro and uh, Eflin or Appel, all of a sudden you're talking about 12 or 13 guys, and then you maybe bring in a couple free agents. And so all of a sudden, you know, I think uh, next year maybe you're looking at a team making a leap and getting up, you know, closer to 500. And then a couple of years from now, you know, maybe you got a team that's ready to contend for a wild card spot or, or a postseason spot. Yeah, Jerry, there is one, th- you know, in baseball, it seems like over the last couple of years, we've seen some improbable teams that didn't have high expectations get off to good starts and really be the springboard to them being competitive and fun throughout the summer. I think the Astros last year, maybe the Indians a couple of years ago where no one really saw them, the Orioles a couple of years back, expectations weren't really there. But a good start can really at least keep people interested but also keep the team in that 500 range over the course of a season. You know, you get off to a bad start, it seems like it's a long summer when you get off to that bad start. But the good start sometimes springboards teams that really didn't have high expectations into better things. Yeah, you know, these young kids, they can be dangerous when they start to believe. You know, uh, like I said, I just think when you look at that team, you guys look at it, there's not a stretch of the lineup where you say, boy, you know, they got to be careful here. Maybe maybe the top four guys, you know, because Howard can, can yank one, but they, you, they, they're going to need to do something about a couple of dead spots in the lineup, I think, if they want to make a step forward in terms of wins and losses. Um, 
But again, I don't think it's really as much about the raw wins and losses as it is about them developing and working these kids in methodically, you know, kind of like uh, you think about the Brewers years and years ago when they had Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder and Corey Hart and J.J. Hardy and Ricky Weeks. You know, you have all these guys and probably don't bring them all at once, but every three or four or six months, another one comes up and all of a sudden you get a really nucleus of a very good young lineup. And, you know, the main thing the Phillies have is pitching to go with it. Uh, that's the big thing. And their pitching is good enough and the bullpen's been good enough that, you know, other than three or four games, they're not getting blown out. So, uh, you know, that's a huge thing for morale, at least, is you, you know, you're going to be in every game or just about every game. And, uh, you know, obviously they could use something out of Hellickson, who's been kind of up and down. Charlie Morton getting hurt, didn't, you know, didn't help. Uh, but as long as Velasquez and Nola and Eikhoff continue to pitch like that, uh, you know, they are going to be competitive on most nights. And when you mentioned corner outfielders, Jerry, you don't forget about uh, Aaron Altair getting hurt in spring training. That's a name that just popped back in my head. I want to ask you about uh, – the Phillies and their budget and the money that they don't have a lot of money on their books. So is that, are there 2018 free agents out there that the Phillies are targeting now? Yeah. I don't know that there are guys that are targeting now, but that is, that class is supposed to be like the epic class of a time, right? I think it's uh, what Bryce Harper and I think Chato's in that class. And, you know, you could go out there. I mean, if you want to go out there and spend 200 or 300 million and, hitch your wagon to one of these guys, I think they're a team that certainly has the financial resources to do something like that. Uh, in Bryce Harper's case, it might be 500000 yeah. No, No, I don't know that they would go after him, but they really have nothing on the book. And if they bring in a, you know, a superstar-type player who can kind of carry that lineup in the middle of the lineup, they are going to have the resources to do it. So I don't know that they, uh, at this point have really targeted anybody, you know, but that free agent crop is supposed to be uh, one of the epic ones in history. And when you start to look at teams that aren't going to be burdened with long-term obligations, I mean, you know, the Dodgers are going to be on the hook to Kershaw still. The Red Sox will have all that money invested in price. You know, the Cubs have uh, Hayward and Lester and, you know, hundred plus million dollar contracts for a long time. Philly's going to be one of the few teams that, you know, is in a big market that isn't going to be burdened with a couple of huge contracts. So you have to think they're going to at least be kicking the tires on some of these guys. Baseball writer ESPN.com, Jerry Krasnick here at Jay Krasnick on Twitter to read his article, The Phillies' Hot Start Won't Last, But It's Sure Been Fun to Watch, Jerry says. You can read that now at ESPN.com. Jerry, always a pleasure, pal. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys.